In traditional cypherpunk fashion, there was a proposal published in July of 2016. It simply read, Hi, I have an idea for improving privacy in Bitcoin. My friend who knows technology says this channel would have interest, followed by a text file proposal. The proposal was written by a user with the pseudonym Tom Elvis Jedusor, Voldemort's French name in the Harry Potter series. The proposal was called Mimblewimble, which was also a Harry Potter reference, specifically a curse that was used to keep people from talking about a specific subject. So on the screen here, you can see the opening lines of the very mysterious Mimblewimble proposal. The Mimblewimble proposal posed a design for a blockchain-based ledger system that used a cryptographic protocol more scalable and more private than that of Bitcoin. By modifying transaction types in Bitcoin, Mimblewimble aims to be as low functionality as possible while maintaining high privacy and high scalability. Because of this drastic change from normal Bitcoin, it aims to be implemented as an alternate blockchain, a sidechain or altcoin perhaps, that supports a different type of transaction than what Bitcoin uses currently. On the privacy side, Mimblewimble builds upon confidential transactions, an earlier proposal by Greg Maxwell, by implementing range proofs, homomorphic commitments, Peterson commitments, and other cryptographic primitives. Also, all values in a transaction are encrypted with so-called blinding factors, secondary elliptic curves used solely for privacy's sake. Also, it bundles many transactions into larger transactions in order to scramble inputs and outputs to obfuscate the origin and destination of Bitcoins, and also for scalability reasons as well. With Mimblewimble, you can treat each block as one large transaction, and you can also merge transactions across blocks. Joining transactions across blocks could extend all the way from the Genesis block to the latest block, so Mimblewimble can thus reduce the need to maintain entire blockchain history since the Genesis block. The original proposal pointed out that to get to the current version of the blockchain, one must start from the Genesis block and start block verification from there. And as of July 2016, the time of publication, 150 million transactions must be replayed to produce the set of only 4 million unspent transaction outputs. Mimblewimble promises to half the size of the blockchain while still maintaining confidential transactions and obscured transaction graphs. Also, Mimblewimble simplifies the current Bitcoin model to transactions that don't need extra functionality other than simply transferring value from sender to recipient. It does this by eliminating Bitcoin script. And that's the price one must pay to enable such privacy that Mimblewimble promises to provide. Currently, Mimblewimble is under active development, and its most popular implementation is called Grin. Now, it's important for us to reflect to see how far we've come with privacy and anonymity. As an exercise in reflection, here are some recent quotes from influential people in the whole space of crypto for privacy. Here's a quote from Timothy May, the author of the Crypto Anarchist Manifesto. I think Satoshi would barf or at least work on a replacement for Bitcoin as he first described in 2008 to 2009. That's a pretty pessimistic outlook, but that's from the perspective of crypto anarchists. And while that cause was the motivating factor for creating Bitcoin in the first place, the average user probably doesn't strongly align with that ideology. Next, here's a quote from Ricardo Spagni, the main maintainer of the Monero project. Privacy isn't a thing you achieve. It's a constant cat and mouse battle. This is true in that you just don't simply achieve privacy, or it's not that likely that you can just achieve privacy. Fundamentally, it's easy to see why. With privacy, you could have the most secure system in the world, but the moment one part fails or it's shown that a part of your system can potentially fail or be broken, then you've lost. Nicholas Kristen from Carnegie Mellon was a part of the team that found a major vulnerability in Monero in early 2018, and he summarizes the previous point pretty concisely in relation to immutable public ledgers. You have a permanent record of everything taking place. If down the road someone finds a vulnerability that you can reveal what happened in the past, you may still be at risk. 
So it's clear that privacy is a major challenge. But in general, it's actually more of a matter of security than of privacy. Privacy can be seen as a subset of security. Privacy is the act of protecting confidential information, where security is the protecting. In tying this back to security, we can again look at the scalability trilemma from the past weeks. By now, it should be very clear that there indeed are trade-offs between security, decentralization, and scalability, if it wasn't clear before. Clearly, centralized mixers and masternode mixer networks sacrifice decentralization for privacy and security. On the other hand, multi-layer blockchain protocols such as Dash's masternode network and Zcash's zero-knowledge security layer have associated overhead that may hinder performance not to mention other protocol-specific scalability hits. Also, oftentimes in regards to mixing, it's said that mixing should be done in advance so as to spread out mixing overhead. This, unfortunately, is not possible if a user is sending many small transactions where each incurs a non-negligible mixing fee. And if they run out of pre-mixed funds, that incurs mixing overhead. Really, there is no perfect all-around blockchain system. Instead, each is designed for its specific goal and use case.